Well, they will just be marked late. So that's on them. But because we are getting started, Loyal, can you please return to your seat? Yes. You missed the best that I got. Well, in this class? No. Yeah. Oh, you're not talking about grades. No, I am. <laughs> you yeah. have like what? Like an F? Oh, like a plus? No. Oh, no. no. Not talking about grades. What do you have? I got boom boom. What? Boom stuff? Oh, nice. Yeah, but you distribute it to the rest of your classmates. Oh. <laughs> All right, just a reminder, we gotta start building these routines. I know I don't always have the packets up here, but there's always going to be something to take when we come into the classroom. So if you have not already, please grab a packet for today's work, unless you are working on a laptop. That's so cool. I'm about to give me them. I've been looking for them. Looking for what? The Nike, whatever you get on. Damn. That's too tough. Please grab a packet. Oh, wait, you grab a packet. No, you didn't. Loyal, I'm not going to with you. This is my private packet. Please. <laughs> Please, I'm going to give y'all some souls. <laughs> Loyal, every single day after third period, when y'all go home to your love, lovely homes, get to my little Prius. You know? I, I get to my little you. car. Thank you so much. I, I get to my little you. car, and I'm just like, bang my head against the wheel. I'm like, go Loyal. What is up with that one? She gives me highs. She distracts me. Why is she like this? <laughs> it's a lie. It's a lie. Del, uh, so thank you for grabbing the package for Loyal. All right, temperature check. You know how I feel about Loyal. How do you feel about meeting new people? Mm -hmm. Please put up the number of fingers that corresponds to your answer. Remember, easy participation. Three, okay, you don't care about new people. Why is that not a surprise? I'm just kidding. Two, maybe just one. You have it like I, I'm gonna be friends with someone. I we gonna be loyal, gonna be close. Kai does not care. Okay, we have an apathetic classroom. Del and Asia, what are we feeling? How do we feel about new friends? One for you don't like new friends, no new friends. Two, maybe just one. Three, don't care. Four, you like new people, and five, you love meeting new people. Three, three. Okay, you don't care. No one cares about friends here. What do you do? Two, maybe just one. Okay. Hold on, wait, no. When I said I don't care, I mean, like, I don't care about meeting people, not like I don't care about them. Okay, anyway, so Loyal hates all of you. Um, uh -oh. If anyone cares to know, minus five, I do love meeting new people. The reason is I love when I can have a bunch of people around the world where I can travel to. I have friends in Tokyo, Singapore, Turkey, New York City, California. Anytime I go to uh, those places, I don't have to pay for a hotel or Airbnb because I just couch surf. And it's nice. Wait, where are you from? Boston. Boston. But I haven't lived in Boston for eight years. So. Damn, you don't miss it? Uh, I miss it. I just left for college and I moved to Providence for college and then I moved here and I've been here for like a year now. So. Oh, yeah. All right, so um, we're just going to dive into our agenda. We just did some SEL. Agenda now. Um, we are going to go over our do now um, and then we have a sentence writing activity to help us get uh, acquainted with writing longer. Uh, we're going to finish off the text dependent questions from the Prince's monologue from yesterday um, and then we have our first break of the day. Afterwards, we have a video that talks about what tragedy is and what a tragic hero is. You're going to fill in some definitions for that. And then we are going to read more Romeo and Juliet and characterize them. Uh, and then we will end with a break. Um, as usual, during this break, it's good to see y'all. Please grab a packet on the way in. Thank you, Malik. Thank you, Anasia. Um, once we get to the end, we'll have a break. Uh, this would be time to do any makeup work. Check up with me to figure out what makeup work you need to do. And check uh, up on your grades with Miss Annette if you have not already. All right, so quick announcements. Just a reminder, your syllabi were due last week. I'm extending the deadline to Thursday. I know you get one. Please get them in so that uh, you can get a free test grade. Hi, thank you. Please, please put the phone away. Uh, Loyal, I will get you a fresh trip on this. What's the name? It's Will. 
grow up without love. No, you don't need to be loved. As long as you love yourself. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Still love. Huh? But that's still love. Right. Self-love is still love. I also love what just happened there, a collaborative answer. It took a bit, but you're right, right? Maybe some people feel like you don't need any external love. All you need is self-love. But Della, I agree with Della. I do think self-love is a form of love. Awesome. Okay, so let's move on from this. We have a sentence writing activity. So like I mentioned, we have an assessment starting on Thursday. So we are going to practice writing longer, more descriptive writing. If you take a look on uh, page one of your packet from today. Hold up, this is someone's packet, my bad. If you take a look at your packet from today, you should see all of these notes here. So. We can make our sentences, hey Dion, um, please grab my packet and have some tea. We can make our sentences more exciting by extending them and adding in related ideas. So, so for example, because shows the reason behind something, but shows different or change, and so shows how one thing causes another thing. This might be review to y'all, uh, but it would be really helpful for you to start implementing them into your own sentences. So the example I have for you is I went to the beach. That's not that interesting, right? It just ends there. I don't know anything about you. I don't know anything about the beach. Doesn't really help me. If you add because, I went to the beach because it was the first sunny day in weeks, that gives me a little bit more details about what is going on. Likewise, I went to the beach, but I forgot to bring my towel. Gives me a little bit more of an idea of you. Maybe you're a forgetful person. I went to the beach so I didn't complete any of the chores I needed to. Again, tells me a little bit more about you. Tells me that maybe you are not super responsible, like me. All right, so your task. Uh, you have four questions on your sheet. The first one is, Spider-Man saved me. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna fill in that sentence with whatever you would like. Spider-Man saved me because, give me a reason. Likewise, number two and three, you're gonna complete those sentence frames. And for number four, you're gonna circle one of the conjunctions, because, but, or so, and complete that sentence frame as well. Does anybody have any questions about what we are doing? So, yeah, what's up, Dion? So, um, what up? What up? Everything? <laughs> I'm going to start people off. Dion, I'll be back. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I forgot what the question was about. All right, what we got written about with Spider-Man in the beginning? Like, how he saved his You can life. write anything you would like so long as it makes sense after you say, Spider-Man saved me because. You're just so, extending the sentence. So, it's got to be about Spider-Man? Yes. yes. So, we're working on using conjunctions. The activity is using conjunctions to expand your sentence. The original sentence was, I went to the beach, right? Or Spider-Man saved me. That's a basic sentence. It's a simple sentence. I'm going to give y'all four minutes now to do this, and then Now, you want to make a more we'll complex or compound sentence by using the word because. It makes your writing more interesting, and it adds more detail to your writing. So, Spider-Man saved me because... Finish that sentence. Uh, she's right. You see your little pencil. Well, look, it just moves. It just moves. Focus on your own. Focus on your own. When you're right, done, you're working on someone else. Because I can say uh, because I watched the movie. Spider Man saved me because you watched his movies. Okay. <laughs> He's like, that's my fan. I gotta save him. Monty, you is the name of the right? That's where we are going to stand. Oh, yeah, so we're just going to work on this after the, the whole thing. Yeah, but I don't even know that Romeo is moving. I don't. Well, you don't have to know. I agree with you. You make it up. Why did Sam still want to fight the whole thing with Monty? Sam still want to fight the whole thing with Monty. What? No, I didn't. Uh, 
Right. Yeah, so if you had you know, your whole family, you're called the waters. Right. right. So anyone in your family is part of the waters. <laughs> so the Montagues is the whole family of Montagues. Sam says one of five, the whole family of Montagues. So what happens? Juliet are going to 
also die, but at least they die together. Yeah, it is harsh, but I also do think a lot of people are like, oh, that's kind of romantic, which I disagree with, but I don't know. Some people really think it's the ultimate act of love. I mean, if they were like 90 and they died because yeah, they sweet. Right, but they're like 13 and 17 and they died for each other. 13 and 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm also not a huge fan of the age difference, but that was very normal, I think, during Shakespearean times. All right. Um, I'm going to erase this. It does not look like anyone needs to copy it down. All right. So I know this might have been a review for y'all. Y'all did a great job. So remember, when we are writing our paragraphs, to extend your answers with conjunctions like because, but, or so. Okay, cool. So, uh, we went over fate and foreshadowing yesterday. Just as a quick review for folks who are not here. So folks who are not here, please bring your heads up. Foreshadowing is a literary device that writers use to hint the reader that something will happen later on in the text. Um, so in the prologue, we already got told that Romeo and Juliet are going to die. As we continue to read Romeo and Juliet today, be on the lookout for clues about what is fated to happen to our characters. Um, so we read the princess monologue yesterday. Uh, I will reread this again because we did already read it yesterday. Uh, and we also answered question number one. So this time period is going to be for y'all to answer questions two through five. So as I am reading, please pay attention to number two. How many times have the two households fought each other? Number three, what must the citizens of Verona have to do when the Montagues and Capulets fight? Number four, what does the prince want the two households to do? And number five, based on our understanding of foreshadowing, what is the prince saying will happen the next time there is a fight? So I'm gonna read this again, and then I will give y'all time to independently answer questions two through five, and I will catch up anyone who was not here yesterday. All right, so you can follow along on yesterday's packet on page six. You rebels. Enemies of the peace, men who turn their weapons against their own neighbors. They won't listen to me? You there, you men, you beasts, who satisfy your anger with fountains of each other's blood. I'll have you tortured if you don't put down your sword and listen to your angry prince. Three times now, riots have broken out in this city, all because of a casual word from you, old Capulet and Montague. Three times the peace has been disturbed in our streets, and Verona's old citizens have had to take off their dress clothes and pick up their rusty spears to part you. If you ever cause a disturbance on our streets again, you'll pay for it with your lives. Everyone else, go away for now. You, Capulet, come with me. Montague, this afternoon, come to Old Freetown, the court where I deliver judgments, and I'll tell you what else I want from you. As for the rest of you, I'll say this once more, go away or be put to death. All right, so we had answered the first question yesterday. For those of you who weren't here, I'll be around to help you with that first question. But for right now, uh, I'm gonna give you some time to independently or with a partner answer questions two through five. I'm gonna put five minutes on the clock. If we finish early, we'll go over it early and then we'll move on to our break. Look in the paragraphs. 
Uh, I'm going to give y'all a minute and 30 more seconds to answer the question. Oh, no, no, no. What does the princess do? Okay. Oh, so keep reading. Okay. Keep reading in this paragraph. And what does he tell them to do? Finally, what does he tell them to do? So easy. This is my experience. Yes, exactly. What are the citizens? What are the citizens forced to do because of the fighting? Yeah, they want them to get naked. Exactly. <laughs> well, they're they're like you know they got to take off their nice clothes. Yeah, their dress clothes or their nice clothes. They got to take off their dress clothes, their nice clothes, and put and put on their you know whatever you know their work clothes or their cleaning clothes. I don't know if you guys wear clothes when you clean the house. I wear clothes no. everywhere. I, I mean, we all wear clothes when we clean the house. However, what kind of clothes do you wear? Like, like you have what, what, whatever you're wearing. Sometimes I'll put on like old sweats and a t-shirt or whatever to clean the house. It depends. Like, you just get out the shower or something and you, you know. Right. Clean Good job. So, number five. And the latest Jordan. <laughs> to clean your house. Yeah. But you gotta you're like one of those house those fifties housewives that like wore pearls and like, you know, high heels. I mean in a man version. In like a man version. Your Jordans and your like gold chains to like around the house. No. <laughs> All right. Let's go over these answers together and then you'll have our first break. Alright. Can we stay off our phones until our break? Number two, how many times? Number two, how many times have the two households fought each other? Loyal. Three. Thank you. They fought three times. So if you do not get that, go ahead and copy this down. Number three, what must the citizens of Verona have to do when the Montagues and Capulets fight? What are they doing? They had to um, take off. They had to um, take off. Take off. Take off. All right. All right. Let me start over. Y'all don't think I'm done. What the fuck? They had to take off their dress clothes and put their rest of clothes on. They had to take off their dress clothes. Okay. They, they put on like clothes they can use to yeah, do something. To part them. What else do they pick up to part them? Yeah and pick up their spears to part them. Perfect. So, the Montagues and Capulets get into fights all the time. The citizens have to break them up all the time. The prince is sick of it. So, what does the prince want the two households to do? Loyal? I have a question. Um, does money say pick up their clothes? Do you know how to um, stuff happens to be when they be having like, the white, they have the white little suits under their clothes. That's what they had under there. I have no clue. White suits. But I'm yeah, sure was there was some type of undergarment that was there. Do you have the answer to number four? Oh, I didn't even do number four. Okay, so does anybody have the answer to number four? What does the prince want the two households to do? Go oh, that Del? Go away. Yeah, he wants them to all go away, and then loyal, I heard, stop fighting. There's also another potential answer. Part ways to stop fighting. What does he ask them to do? He asked the Montagues and Capulets to do something at the very end of the paragraph. To come with them? Yes. He asked them to meet with him, right? So he wants to talk with them separately about their fighting. So either of these answers will work. Um, it looks like folks are getting that one down, so I'm going to give y'all a couple of seconds to do that before we answer the last one. Yeah, well, I gotta get that down. Hold on, hold on.
the next time there is a fight? What are those consequences, Kiva? Can anybody in the house out? They're gonna um, they're gonna get the electric chair. Maybe not the electric chair, but they certainly will pay with their lives. Yes, they will die. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they will pay with their lives or die. So this is your answer number five. Who will go watch the movie? You could watch it tonight. No, yeah, no, no. So, already from the prologue and from the beginning of the play, Act 1, Scene 1, we keep seeing this repetition of how our lovers will die, and then we hear our prince say, uh, Y'all are going to be fighting, you will die. So, we know that as we keep reading Romeo and Juliet, there's going to be a lot of violence, death, and bloodshed. Super great, super fun. Um, make sure you have these answers. I am gonna put the timer on for five minutes and we're gonna take a quick break. And then after that, we're gonna dive into the next part of Romeo and Juliet. Maybe you would read the book. We're gonna start reading it. Uh, I mean, this part of it. But we're gonna start reading more of it today. Oh, I thought you already read it? No, no, no. Oh, so no, this no, is the no, prologue no. and the prince monologue. Oh, okay. This is the beginning of the play. What were the songs you wanted me to put on the, the playlist? For me. And uh, he said big thirty. No, keep this song going. No, no, I didn't no. Say that. That shit fun. I have a running list. Huh? If I have time, I will add some songs to the list. Oh, you're not hot fans, none of that. Yeah, cool. What was it? Hot fans. I will take a look tonight and find a clean version. You can just tell it, you can just tell this clean because it's say hot fans. You just tell it to put the clean version on the computer. I want to listen to it first. This music ain't turning me up enough, man. It ain't making me want my hands to move, man. I need well, just saying that it's class. You don't need to turn up for class. Say that for your party. I need thirty, bro. Like on the hip hop, so. My hands are moving. A lot of girls can be soft. Y'all, y'all have more than water fountains. We do have water fountains. No, but the other ones. The real ones. As far as I know. I think they all got cut. They got out.
The story goes something like this. A royal, rich, or righteous individual, who otherwise happens to be a lot like us, makes a mistake that sends his life and the lives of those around him spiraling into ruin. Sound familiar? This is the classic story pattern for Greek tragedy. For thousands of years, we've spun spellbinding tales that fit this pattern, and modern storytellers around the world continue to do so. Three critical story components, influenced by Aristotle's poetics, help us understand the allure. First, the tragic hero should be elevated in rank and ability, but also relatable. Perhaps he is a king, or extraordinary in some other way. But because you and I are neither unusually good nor unusually bad, neither is the hero. And he has one particular tragic flaw, or hemartia, something like ambition, tyranny, stubbornness, or excess pride that causes him to make a critical mistake. And from that mistake comes disaster and downfall. As an example of these elements in action, Let's look to Sophocles' Oedipus Rex, about a man who doesn't know he was adopted and is warned by an oracle that he's destined to murder his father and marry his mother. In trying to escape this fate, he kills a man who won't get out of his way at a crossroad. He then cleverly answers the riddle of the monstrous Styx, freeing the king of Thebes from a plague. He marries the widowed queen and becomes king. But after he finds out that the murdered man was his father, and the queen he married is his mother, Oedipus gouges out his eyes and retreats into the wilderness. At the beginning of his story, Oedipus is elevated in ability, and he's elevated in rank. He's neither unusually evil nor saintly. He's relatable. Notice the height of the fall, once a king, but now homeless and blind. It's more tragic, after all, if a king falls from a tall throne, than if a jester falls off his stepstool. Oedipus's tragic flaw is hubris, or excessive pride, and it causes him to attempt to avoid the fate prophesied for him, which is exactly what makes it happen. He's a particularly unlucky soul, because his mistake of killing his father and marrying his mother is done in complete ignorance. Of course, these narrative principles transcend classic Greek tragedy. In Shakespeare's canon, we see Hamlet's indecisiveness lead to a series of bad decisions, or perhaps non-decisions, that culminate in the death of almost every character in the play. And Macbeth's ambition catapults him to the top before sending him careening to his grave. Even modern pop culture staples like Game of Thrones and The Dark Knight resonate with the like this. Now, wait for me to over 2,000 years ago. So what's the point of all of this suffering? According to Aristotle and many scholars since, a good tragedy can evoke fear and pity in the audience. Fear of falling victim to the same or similar catastrophe and pity for the height of the hero's downfall. Ideally, after watching these tragic events unfold, we experience catharsis, a feeling of relief and emotional purification. Not everyone agrees why this happens. It may be that empathizing with the hero allows us to experience and release strong emotions that we keep bottled up. Or maybe it just lets us forget about our own problems for a little while. But regardless of how you feel when you watch poor Oedipus, never has there been a more salient reminder that no matter how bad things get, at least you didn't kill your father and marry your mother.
when we are surprised by what happens, we are shocked by what happens. It's the most exciting part of the play. I'm glad that you're going to do that for yourself, Leah. Yeah. I'm going to have a big family size when I come in tomorrow. All right. After the climax, the hero experiences uh, anonorosis, or the recognition of what has happened, gaining insight into their life. So Oedipus, this king, when he realized what he has done, he like, finally accepts that he brought a curse into this town, or the city, and he's horrified. Next part, despite the recognition, the cat uh, catastrophe or disaster occurs, which can include the hero's death. In this case, I don't think Oedipus dies, but he rips his eyeballs out of his head. He blinds himself because he is so horrified at what he has done, and his mother also takes her own life because she is horrified that she married her son without knowing. How did you know? Um, so, Oedipus was born, in a, he, when he was born, he was sent off to a different town without anyone knowing, and when he was traveling somewhere, he saw this random man, he thought the man was trying to rob him and kill him, not knowing that it was his father who was the king of the city. Um, okay, finally, the resolution occurs when the other characters mourn the hero, but also appreciate the good that has come with their passing. So, eventually, Oedipus is a blind, homeless man, he leaves the city, Everyone in the city stops getting sick because the curse is over. They're sad because he's a great king, but they're also happy because they're no longer infected by this curse. And that is the resolution. Just give him once upon a time. Yeah, well, that was the entire plot of one of the great Greek tragedies. So. <laughs> All right, so y'all now have the definition of that. We, as we talked about, Romeo and Juliet is also an example of a tragedy. So today we are going to read a little bit more about them. Um, yes. All right. So everyone should turn to page three of their packet. It should say Analyzing Romeo up top. Three of your packets. It should say Analyzing Romeo up top. It's a full page of text. Who's going to be our Romeo? 
Romeo, Romeo, wherefore out thou? No, that's a lot. All right, I um, actually, Miss Manette, will you read this for me? Oh, since sure. they actually don't have the this exact copy up here, it might be farther away. Sure, you start reading this. If you want to take the will you throw? Sure. All right, I'm his best friend. It was. What sadness la lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love? Out. Of love? Out of her favor where I am in love. Alas, that love, so gentle in his view, should be so tyrannous and rough in, in proud, proud. In proof. Thank God. All right, so really quick. The only thing I didn't know from here is that Romeo, at the beginning of the play, he is heartbroken over uh, Rosaline, his ex-girlfriend. I know that because he's his friends say, are you in love? Dion. Okay. So as we read the Shakespearean, you guys check in on the modern column so you can follow along. When we say out, it, of course it means out. When Benvolio says of love, it means out of love. So you can see the direct translation there. So make sure you guys are following along. So the only thing to get from here is right now Romeo is super heartbroken, super sad because he is out of love with his ex-girlfriend, or rather his ex-girlfriend dumped him and he is still in love with her. This is where I want y'all to start copying down the notes that I put on the board. Okay, so guys. So everyone should see Analyzing Romeo, and they should see Romeo's uh, Shakespearean column on the left here. So this is modern. You can annotate wherever you want as long as you're looking. I mean, like, you're checking. I mean, just my life. Follow along. She'll, oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. She'll, she'll walk through right. it. Catch by the stove. All right. Are you? Holy fuck, you might be such a... Yeah, I'll show you when I get a chance to actually show you and people are seated and I can give my instructions. Yeah, got you. Roll them off. Hey. Uh, Dion, you don't need that. We're not going to need that. Yeah, I can't have a If it turns into an airplane or a ball, yeah. Oh. Yeah. No. All right. You guys, so we'll turn around the right column so you can do notes. As I am reading, follow along on page three of your packet for Romeo. I'll start reading with a little silence and everyone is paying attention. Alright. This is Romeo. Alas, that love whose view is muffled still, showed without eyes to see pathways to his will. Where shall we dine? O oh me, what fray was here? Yet tell me not, for I have heard it all. Here's much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, O oh brawling love, O oh loving hate, O oh anything of nothing first created? O oh heavy lightness, serious vanity, misshapen chaos of well-seeming forms, feather of lead, bright smoke, cold fire, sick health, still waking sleep, that is not what it is. This love feel I that feel no love in this, dost thou not laugh. All right, so a lot was just said there. I know it might not come super easily, which is why the translation is here to help you understand what's going on. But I will tell you what stood out to me. Something that we forget about a lot when we're analyzing text is the punctuation. In this section alone, I'm circling all the question marks and exclamation points that I see in this first stanza. So please do so on your sheets as well. Oh, yeah. So I'm in this first section here, I'm circling all of the exclamation points and the question marks that I see show up in this first stanza alone. All right, so in this first stanza, I see eight exclamation points slash question marks. You said eight. Yeah, there are eight of them. Your limitations is something you understand. I don't see them. The, que the question marks at the end of each sentence, it's not a little too though. If you are on the Google Classroom, uh, you would just make a note that there are eight exclamation points and question marks. You don't actually have to highlight them. All right. So what this makes me think is if you're using a lot of exclamation 
exclamation points and question marks in any of your texts, in any of your speeches. You're probably really emotional. You're talking really fast, you're shouting, you're confused. So circling all these question marks and exclamation points, it makes me think that Romeo is very emotional right now. This is a side note that I'm gonna make in the margins. So y'all go ahead and copy. Romeo is very emotional in the margins, and I can tell that because of all the points in the margins. Alright, I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to copy that down, and then I have another note for Romeo. <laughs> he's very what? Uh, uh, emotional. And I know that because he's shouting a lot and asking a lot of questions based on the F. You want me to write that too? No, I'm just explaining. <laughs> Great. The other thing that I noticed, even if I don't completely understand. I definitely hear that sound though. Please put the phone away. Even if I don't understand entirely what is going on. Oh, yeah. We're not, um, I'm circling all the punctuation marks. Yes, all of the uh, exclamation points and question marks. In the first one? In the first one, yep. Even if I don't understand what is going on, when I read this, something that stood out to me was how many opposites he used. Brawling love and loving hate. So when you're brawling with someone, you're fighting with them, you hate them. Brawling love, loving hate. Love and hate are oftentimes considered opposites. Anything of nothing. Heavy lightness. Serious vanity. Misshapen chaos. Well-seeming forms. So misshapen chaos, everything's a mess. Well-seeming forms, everything's together. Feather of lead. Feather is light, lead is heavy. Bright smoke, cold fire, sick health. There are a lot of opposites in this text. I'm just going to note that I saw some opposites. A lot of English teachers might feel like there is only one right way to analyze or understand a text. For me, I think there are multiple different interpretations. So when I see a bunch of opposites, and I know that Romeo is extremely heartbroken. I want to think about how heartbreak makes you feel all of these opposites, all of these contradicting emotions. So if I'm thinking of my last heartbreak, I think of how there were days when I was happy. I missed them. I forgave them, right? But there are also days where I was really pissed off. I was really mad that they didn't answer my text. I was really mad that uh, I was broken up with, right? I, 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 it's the it's second of the school, so did you get your heart broke? <laughs> I have gotten my heart broken once in my life. Wow. I am usually the heartbreaker, okay? You can spread that rumor around school as well. Like that. Okay. You can spread that rumor around school. Um, so, following heartbreak, right? What this makes me think about Romeo is that heartbreak is making him feel full of emotions. He's being torn by his heartbreak, he's being pulled in opposite directions because of his heart heartbreak. So my note for Romeo here, you're gonna actually write this somewhere else and I'll show you after, so you can hold off on this. Romeo's heartbreak. Makes him feel torn. So, yes, you are going to write that on the very back here. Romeo's heartbreak makes him feel torn, right? He's pulled in opposite directions all the time. Write this live. I'm going to show you on page six, on the very back of your packet, what you're going to do is you're going to put one of the quotes that stand out to you on the left column. Let me pull up the packet on here so you can see. All right, so the quote that I underlined, ooh, I need to erase that in a second. 
But a bunch of the quotes that I underlined were full of opposites. I'm going to go ahead and put any of those quotes onto here. Ms. Wood, do you mind erasing the form? Yes. Yeah. Is that we Romeo's heartbreak if you feel the part of the other part? Yeah. So, I don't have to write the entire quote, just enough to get some of the opposites that I mentioned. The one that I like is Feather of Lead, Bright Smoke, Cold Fire, Zick Hell. Thank you. 
and find a life rich there with beauty's pen. Examine every married lieutenant and see how one another lends content, and what obscured in this fair volume lies. Find written in the margin of his eyes the precious book of love, this unbound lover, to beautify him only lacks a cover. Who is Romeo? The fish lives in the sea and tis much pride, for fair without the fair within to hide. That book in many eyes doth share the glory, that in gold class looks locked in the golden story. So shall you share all that he doth possess by having him making yourself no less. Speak I just forgot. I just had to ask you. Speak briefly. Can you like a Paris love? You did not just see that. Juliet, who has not yet met Romeo, doesn't even what? care about love. 
She doesn't even think about marriage. She doesn't care about getting a boyfriend. She's yeah. all good. All right, wait. This is on. We're on page 12. This is the scene that the end of the movie comes. Oh, I found one. Yep. Go ahead and underline that. This note here is something you can put in your table on page 6 next to Juliet's uh, name. This is all I need y'all to get from this section. So in all that whole scene, the line where she's like... Um, based on the translated side over here, what is Lady Capulet, what is she asking Juliet to do? What does her mom want Juliet to do? Get married. Is there a specific person you have in mind? Um, <laughs> I was just looking at this too. I, my eyeball hit that. Yeah? What's the name? Shit, I can't keep them for all that. Um, <laughs> where does that? Oh, yeah, here. Here. Mm -hmm. So here's like, the line. Oh, wait, so and this I'm is the that? excerpt that we are looking at. No, no, I mean, it's very abrasive. Harris, yes. The nurse has this whole long thing. All right, so what we learned is that Juliet doesn't care about love, but, but her mom wants her to marry, or wants her to marry someone like Harris. Harris is another guy uh, in the text who the Capulets approve of. And last thing, how does Juliet feel about being set up with Paris? What does she say? I got time. If you're unsure, read the translated side over here. What does Juliet say about meeting Paris? Hold on, you change the paper. Right. Yes, so on the, it's on the back page four. Spot. How does Juliet feel about meeting Paris? You can see that. Right. How does Juliet feel about meeting Paris? Is she excited? Is she sad? What do you think? She's not really nothing. She's looking, liking the You know, it's like very common. I don't think she likes him. Why do you say that? Because she's so dumb. She might not really fully approve him. All right, thank you, my wonderful friends, Eva and Loyal. What? Juliet says she will try to like Paris, this guy that her parents kind of want to set her up with, but she doesn't really like him. And we know that because she says, I'll look at him and try to like him. Juliet is not really into Paris. But she'll try. What? So, we just underlined and learned two things about Juliet and her love life. Choose one of them and put it on page six of your packet. Oh, nice. Alright. So, so let's pick today. your quote. How many more weeks do you have? Pick your quote that Juliet you got talks like about. Or, you know, or marriage. I would like, like four. four. This week already. Wait, today two days. How many days you can miss? You can if you miss more than three, you're in danger of failing. I believe. Or you, you miss three, you're in danger of failing. Oh, darn it! You don't get put out if you miss two days. So make sure you guys. You don't get put out. Are you guys? You're just in danger of failing. You want them to add to the chart? You don't get a day of that. You don't get a day of that. You can make it up. You don't get put out. That's what my mother said. Teacher, teacher, teacher. Oh my oh God. God. <laughs> so, on the back page, you're going to so put the right, that good. she just pulled out. So long as and you see, your work. looking at the main yeah. text is going to oh be a little bit confusing because what we're I teaching are just thing. excerpts right now. So yeah. it's better to go by this, what's this on one, your this handout. One. So look at it. All right. This is an example of what you can put down for Juliet. So we said when she said it is an honor I do not of. She's talking about marriage. Oh well. This tells me really out. That Juliet is not excited about marriage. 
You came up with this together. You can use it if you would like. You're about your grade. You want to make sure your chart is filled out. I ain't going to be it. Can you tell me about what you in five or six minutes? As soon as Ms. as soon as Ms. No gives us a stopping point. And if you're worried about your grade, you want to get this chart done. Yeah, I can pass for that. I know I should be passing. Me too. If you're here, more than likely you're doing just I fine. Mean, I'm just too busy. I ain't never miss a day. I'm in one day. What? So you just have to choose one of these quotes. I'm giving you all the options. And then we done? Yes. Okay. All right. So choose just either it is an honor I dream not of, and then Juliet is not excited about marriage, or I'll look to life if looking like you move, and Juliet is not really into Paris, but she will try. That is our interpretation of the test. And this keeps saying y'all like that is false. Y'all want. Just doesn't say. She made a kind of like y'all. My bad. My difficult. Very It's a rainbow. It's a rainbow bag. It's giving up. I got some skinny bags out. What is okay? What is rainbow? Oh, okay. What you mean? I did it. Everybody done? Everybody got this? Really? So know. we can go on to the last one. You got the best. Get the best. Alright, good. You guys, everybody got this? So we can move on and get to the last one. No, we're not doing the last one. We're not going to get the points for it. We're not going to get to the last one today. Oh, we're not? I'm going to hit the next stopping point. Okay. Alright. Make sure you Alright, I'm sure you get these two. See, if you if you do all of this, the sheet counts, the chart is a grade. That averages your out your grade out to be a D, a six. A D. A D. Who the fuck Let me tell you, I'm telling you this. So you guys will oh, pay attention and get all your work done. If the Whoa. first part gets you just listen. What if the F excuse hey, me, just please come on. on. If you don't try to use yours as an example. Alright, if you do the first part, your do now, the the sentence, the grammar work. Your vocabulary, you do all that, that's just fine. Me. That's one classwork grade. If she decides to use these charts as classwork grade number two and you don't do them, then that's a five. A 10 plus a five is 15 divided by two. I have to average the grades. So if you don't do all of the activities, if you leave a chart blank, if you don't do something, and you get a zero or a five, which is the lowest score, which is still not passing, your grade averages out to a D, a, D, a six. I, I give you, I, it actually averages out to actually 10 plus 10 because, and then you get a five. So it's 15 divided, uh, it's 25 by two. Yeah, well, so it averages out so that you get like a, a five actually. Yeah, so, right. can I see if, so, so bottom line is, if you do one part but not the other, your grade goes way down. Don't we do this tomorrow too? All right, I'm, I'm going to give y'all the instruction that I gave to section one because we got to the same, we're at the exact same place that we are in the other classes. For the rest of this class period, 